Are you thinking about starting a YouTube channel? Well, stick around because I'm going to tell you about the things that I've learned over the past two years uh, doing the channel that this video is on right now. Doesn't matter what niche you're trying to break into. I think everything that I'm going to talk about is pertinent. What's up? Jim here. Welcome back to J Street Moto. Welcome to the channel if it's your first time. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, click the notification bell, share it with your friends. All that stuff is free to you and it helps the channel. My dogs bark in the background, ignore it. Wife's on her way home. So I thought, well, first off, let me start, oh, shit. First off, let me thank all of you that have subscribed to the channel. Uh, I'm serious. We're over 920 subscribers, and that is just absolutely mind-blowing to me. So I do appreciate it, and I want you to know that I appreciate every single one of you that has ever watched one of my videos, liked it, shared it with your friends, subscribed to the channel. Every single one of you, I, I, I appreciate you. If you ever run into me in public, I've said this before on multiple videos, if you ever run into me in public and we don't know each other, and you walk up to me and you go, hey, aren't you J Street Moto? I'm getting you a drink if you're old enough. So cheers and thank you all for that. This is kind of an important day. I've been creating content on YouTube consistently for about two years now. I started in like July of 2022, really creating regularly released videos on YouTube. To celebrate that, I decided why not make a video telling people what I've learned during that two years, because I've learned a lot. My channel has changed a lot during that time frame. So I thought, why not share it with you? So yeah, if you're thinking about creating a channel, and it doesn't matter what niche you are going with. If you're thinking about creating a channel, watch this video, because it's gonna give you, hopefully, some helpful tips. Now, I will say this, first and foremost, my niche is motorcycles. So think parts, installation, travel, and, uh, well, traditional kind of moto vlogs where the camera's mounted here, there's a camera on the bike maybe, and you're riding along and you're just recording your stream of consciousness while you're out there on the road. Let's get to point number one. And I think there are gonna be five of these, there might end up being six, but for sure there's gonna be five. Point number one, consistency is the key to everything on YouTube. I cannot stress this enough. Consistency is the key to everything on YouTube. And when I say consistency, I don't just mean I'm releasing a video at 11.05 every Tuesday. Consistency flows into everything else you do on your channel. How does your color grading feel? How does your audio feel? How does your content feel? So yeah, consistency is key. That's the first and foremost thing. Whatever your niche is, you need to be consistent in it. And so how you film and the way you present yourself matters because at the end of the day, what I really wanna do is have a connection with you that are watching this video. I want you to feel like you ran into me at a bar <laughs> um, and decided to have a conversation about what happened that day. That's, that's really what I want. And I think most successful YouTube channels, they create that feeling. That's, and that's what I mean by your, the feeling of your videos need to be consistent. So that's the first one. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. Second one, I did not realize how much time editing factored into 
having a YouTube channel. That's the best way to put that. Uh, editing is gonna be the thing that takes up the most time for you when you decide to go down this path. The shooting is pretty easy. It's the taking all that raw content and putting it into a format that makes sense, that makes a story, that, that makes people wanna watch it and stay engaged with it. That takes longer than anything else. To put things in perspective, I have basically four different ways that I create content. One is a traditional, what I will call moto vlog. And that is when I have the camera I'm using right now strapped to my helmet, looking at what I'm looking at and recording my audio. And I have a camera on my bike that I can, it's a 360 degree camera and I'm able to scan to whatever it is that I want to show in that given moment. Second format I use is how I record when we take a long distance trip. Now, when I say long distance trip, me and my buddies, we go out and spend 12 to 14 hours on the motorcycle a day for multiple days. When I record that, or when I try to capture that experience, I do that content differently. I have my 360 camera, or this one, the GoPro, or my old Acaso uh, EK7000 Pro mounted on the bike. When I see something cool that we're approaching, turn the camera on, I hit record, I record for a couple of minutes, then I shut it off. Usually, David normally has his camera too, and it's mounted on his bike as well. And David, throughout the day, will hit record on his camera. When I record a long distance trip, I'm literally stitching together a bunch of two minute clips that were taken across 12 to 14 hours. I'm stitching those all together in a way that makes sense. Perhaps there's some candid content in there where I've taken the camera into a restaurant when we went and had lunch and I videoed what we had to eat. I might be telling you what's going to happen that day at the beginning of the day. I might be summarizing what happened that day at the end of the day. I'm stitching all this stuff together. And then normally with the, with the video that I record while I'm riding, where I'm just turning the camera on and taking a, you know, a shot of something, I'm going to voice over that in post-production when I'm editing. That's the second way I do content. Third way I do content, this. And, and I'll call this talking head content, but it, it honestly is used. This is how I do product unboxings and how I show you how I'm using a product that doesn't require me to be on the bike riding while I'm using it. This talking head format is another way that I do it. Fourth format I use is uh, installation videos. Now that goes down to I'm either repairing something, so I've troubleshot it and I'm repairing it, or I've got a new part and I'm putting it on the bike. Those videos I do for always, 100%, they are always done with two cameras. One camera is on a tripod sitting in my garage. It's usually the 360 camera and it records the entire time. The other camera is either the GoPro or when I just had the Acaso, it was that one. It's a handheld camera. Sometimes it was my phone. I'd pull my phone out and I would start recording. And, and that I use to record the close-up stuff that I'm trying to show you when I'm talking about a specific thing that you need to be aware of when you're working on your motorcycle. If you're gardening, you would use a close-up shot to show how do I plant this tulip bulb the best way that makes it, you know, grow. Those are the four ways I, that I create content. To put things in perspective, I usually shoot for a time frame on my finished videos that last anywhere from seven to eight minutes to like 25. I don't like going beyond that 25 minute window. So I'm trying to put something out there that will keep viewers engaged and make them watch for the entire time period. Let's go back to the format that is the Moto Vlog. 
that format, I might go out on a given day and record and talk for 30, 40 minutes. It's gonna take me about three and a half to four hours to edit that content down to the eight to 20 minute kind of final product that I wanna present you. The long trips where I'm taking all those videos and stitching them together with candid content, voice overlaying at the end, those take, I won't say the longest, but they take an extreme amount of time to take one day of our Canada trip, which I'm gonna drop in right here. I'll just drop in a little clip of it. To take that day where we rode and whittle it down to the size video that I wanted to put out there for you to consume, probably took eight to 10 hours. It's a talking head. That's the easiest, honestly. The, the, the talk, this kind of video is the easiest one to do because really all I got to do is cut out all my mistakes. And, and yes, I've made a few since I started this. So I just cut out those mistakes and I can put it all together and bam, it's out. So that one's the shortest edit and it usually runs about, I don't know, that edit usually runs two and a half hours or so. And then the last version is the installation videos. They also take about eight to 10 hours because you've got so much content you have to chew through. It's, it's so much raw content you have to chew through and, and just to produce a 15 minute video so that you guys watch something that you find entertaining, engaging, and insightful and informational. That's, that's the point, right? So keep that in mind. Editing is gonna be the thing that takes you the longest. However, uh, editing is not the hardest thing about having a YouTube channel. Let me explain what I mean. For me, editing is the longest part The hardest part's actually coming up with an idea to talk about every week. If you decide your YouTube channel is going to drop weekly, remember, go back to point number one, consistency is key. I have to come up with every week. I have to come up with what do I want this week's episode to be about? It's hard. It's hard to consistently come up with what am I going to do? There are times when it's easier. We're going up to Canada. I'll record an episode for every day. That covers me. I, I don't have to think about that. It gives me a vacation from having to think about an idea. Other times it's more difficult because there's a gap between when I travel. So during that time, unless something's happening, interesting, like there's a group ride that's going to happen. Well, that, that makes it easy. I know, okay, there's a group ride happening on this day. I've got time to edit that video and put it out. Now, does that mean that I'm not thinking about it? No, I'm always thinking about what do I want to talk about on the channel? I actually have a note in my phone where I can go in and just type down. When I think about something, I'm like, oh, this would be a good idea to talk about. And so I do that, or this would be a good thing to show, or this is an interesting thing to show. There's, there's stuff that's gonna be happening on the channel that's new, that's different because I said I had four ways that I make content. One thing I've never done is gone live. And I'm in the process of working with a couple of guys that are in the industry that is part of my niche. And uh, I think they're gonna be the first live episode that this channel does because they've not gone live either. So I think that's gonna be something that would be maybe be a fifth. The hardest thing is, <laughs> coming up with the with what the hell you're going to talk about. In my opinion, that's the hardest thing. The most time consuming thing is editing. Hardest thing is figuring out what am I going to talk about. Here's one for you. All right, and and I can't I cannot stress the importance of this one enough. Don't obsess over the analytics when you start your channel. So and let me let me tell you what I mean by that. When I started my channel, when I started releasing videos regularly, right? I dump a video on Tuesday, and then two hours after I dumped the video, I'd be going into YouTube to 
to the creator part of it and looking to see how many views do I have. Don't do that. Don't obsess about it. And, and what I did was I, I made a conscious decision in my own mind two days every week. On Friday morning at 11.05, I go into the my creator tab for YouTube and I look to see how the video did that dropped Tuesday. Now, between Tuesday and Friday, if a comment comes in, I'm notified and I will respond to that comment. I'm very responsive. In fact, if you've got questions about this video, drop a comment. Let's count it, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it has been out for three days before I look to see how is that one doing. And then I don't look at it again. I honestly don't because the next cycle is getting ready to happen. The next Tuesday is getting ready to happen. Then I'm gonna look at how that one did on Friday. So I don't obsess about the view count. That's the first thing. Second thing is subscribers. Keep in mind what I just said a few minutes ago, right? How long it takes, how many hours you invest in editing this footage to put together a 10 to 15, 20 minute video. Monetize the channel. And monetizing the channel just means that YouTube is gonna pay me for the ads that it puts in my videos already. So this video right here might end up having ads in it. Doesn't cost you anything, but YouTube will compensate me for that. If my channel is monetized, here's the catch. To be monetized on YouTube, and there, I, I, should, have pref I should have started all this thing with saying, there are two different ways to make content on YouTube. Two, and only two. One is what's called short form, and one is long form. Uh, and, and there are different stipulations for the shorts than there are for the longs. I'm a long form creator. Long form creators, in order to monetize their channel, they need a thousand subscribers, minimum. And they need, in the last 365 calendar days, people have to have watched your content for a total of 4,000 hours or more. My channel has been over the watch time for a long time. It isn't over the subscriber count yet. I'm close. So this past Sunday, I was at 920 subscribers, which is cool, because that means I only need 80. If you're watching this right now, you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe to it, you'll help me. My point with this whole thing is, don't obsess over the numbers. On Sunday mornings, I wake up and I look to see what my subscriber count is, and then I don't look at it again until the following Sunday. On Friday mornings, around 11.05, I, I, I go on there, I go on the app, I look to see how much was my Tuesday video viewed, how is it performing, and I don't look at it again. Don't obsess over numbers, because that stuff will drive you crazy. Your energy should be spent coming up with ideas about things you want to put on your channel that's going to be ideas that people want to watch. Fifth one. Fifth one, number five. Be authentic. Be yourself. Just be yourself. People can tell. It comes through on the camera. Don't try to be some uh, character. Talk to people the way you would talk to your friends, the way that you do talk to your friends. It's not that hard. Hardest part is getting used to talking to this damn lens right here. That is the hardest part, is getting used to talking to the lens in a way that makes someone think that you're talking to them. So just imagine it's your buddy on the other side of that camera. That's, that's it. Do that and, and you will be your authentic self. I'm gonna give you an extra one. I learned something, no matter how good my content is, I've realized that no matter how good the video is, that does not affect the views. Thumbnails and titles are what get you clicks and views. The quality of what you're producing is what affects your watch time. And this is important to understand. 
Go back to what I said a minute ago. One of the hurdles you have to clear to monetize your channel has nothing to do with the number of views you get. It has to do with the number of people that have subscribed to your channel, and it has to do with how long are they watching your videos. So, quality of your content does matter, and it does impact your ability to monetize your channel. It has nothing to do with the number of views you get. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I could create a video tomorrow that is complete and utter crap. But if I put the right thumbnail on it and I put the right title on it, it'll get a shitload of views. That's the point I'm making. So just be aware of that. If you want people to watch your content and you're proud of your content, spend some time on your thumbnails and spend some time on your uh, your titles and the descriptions in your video. Make sure you're including keywords because some folks are just gonna search. You might have found this not because it was a suggestion but because you searched, uh, how do I start a YouTube channel? And that might be how you ended up watching this. That's because of what's in my description, that's because of what's in my title, and that's because of what's on the thumbnail. I hope if you ride and you're watching this, I hope that you're getting out there with your friends. Check on your friends. Whether you ride or not, check on your friends. Um, I hope that you're getting out there riding. I hope that you're, I mean, we are in the middle of riding season right now, no matter where the hell you live in the US or in the world, really, unless you're down in Australia, I guess. Um, it's riding season. Be out there on your bike. Don't have it sit in the garage. Murphy says hi. Do something outside your comfort zone is a good way that I would I would put it. That's kind of what this channel is about. Do things that are outside of your comfort zone and go have fun. Go live life. We only get one trip on this planet. That's it. We get one time. After that, our energy goes out into the universe and Lord knows what happens to it. Check on your friends. Go enjoy a ride. If you're wanting to start a channel, start a damn channel. Just start recording. If you do, if you are starting a channel currently, uh, I will say this, if you are starting a channel currently, uh, and I don't care what it's about, honestly, I don't care what your channel's about. If you're starting a channel, drop it in the comments. I'll go subscribe to you. And I'll watch your content. I, I promise you I will. I, 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 I watch a lot of YouTube. Drop it in the comments. All right, anyway, I'm done. So uh, like, subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss any new content. Share it with your friends. All that stuff's free to you. Like I said earlier and explained, it helps your channel. Always ride safe. Yeah, ready? One, two, three, shoot. Ah. Asshole. Really? <laughs> Peace out, bitches! <laughs>